Hey YouTube, welcome back to Heritage Focus. Today we're looking at the Mamiya 120mm f4 macro lens on the Fuji GFX 100S. On the GFX platform and most medium format platforms, this lens would be considered a shorter telephoto lens, equivalent to a 75mm f2.5 lens in full frame terms. There are four different versions of this lens. The first version of this lens was introduced in the mid-1970s alongside the Mamiya 645 system. This version of the lens is referred to as the A version, as the letter A appears on the lens ring. The A signifies an apochromatic or near apochromatic design. In 2000, the lens was updated to include a 4-bit CPU, which added focus confirmation to be used with the newly introduced Mamiya 645 AF camera, which featured autofocus capability. This version of the lens is referred to as the MF version, as the A on the lens ring in the prior version was replaced with the letters MF. In 2008, the lens was updated once more with a 16-bit CPU to support expanded communications with camera bodies. This version is referred to as the DMF version, as the lens was now stylized on the lens ring as the Secor D Macro MF. The D indicates that the lens was optimized for digital sensors. The fourth and final version of the lens was introduced in 2011 with an autofocus motor being added. The lens name was changed accordingly, and this version is known as the DAF, or simply the autofocus version. All versions of the lens are optically the same. The lens design consists of nine elements in eight groups and has a nine-bladed aperture. All Mamiya 645 lenses are multi-coated. The version we're reviewing today is the A version, which is the most widely available as it was produced between 1975 and 1999. As this is not a native Fuji GFX lens, we'll use a Mamiya 645 to GFX adapter. The lens weighs 761 grams. The adapter weighs 195 grams. The lens is a manual focus lens with full aperture control on the side. The aperture range is from f2.8 to f32. Being a macro lens, the focus throw is rather long at roughly 250 degrees. The lens is not an internal focus design. It does get considerably longer or shorter by about three and a quarter inches or 83 millimeters as the focus changes. In its shortest state, the lens is about four and three eighths of an inch or 111 millimeters. At its longest extension, the lens measures 7.6 inches or 194 millimeters in length. The adapter adds 1.5 inches, so the fully adapted lens has a maximum length of nine and a quarter inches or 230 millimeters. The lens accepts 67 millimeter filters. The minimum focus distance of the lens is 15 and three quarter inches or 40 centimeters. This is what the fully adapted lens looks like on the Fuji GFX 100S camera. In these images, the lens is shown in its retracted and shortest state. Finding a quality version of the lens is moderately difficult, and eBay will primarily be your best bet. As of the time of filming, Used Photo Pro was the only premium, pre-owned lens dealer with availability, and even then, they only had one copy. There is a small selection of the lens available on eBay, primarily from the Japanese camera sellers. There were 24 copies available at the time of filming, ranging from $215 to $652. There are also other copies available if you're willing to purchase them paired with a Mamiya 645 camera. Let's take a look at some sample images and you can see how the lens performs on the Fuji GFX 100S. Regardless of producing this video in 4K, YouTube will compress these images, so remember that the full resolution images are always available to download at heritagefocus.org. Since this lens is a native medium format lens, vignette is not a factor of adapting the lens to any digital medium format system. There is full sensor coverage and there is no need to use a 35mm or crop mode with this lens. Bokeh is just okay on this lens. Autofocus transition zones are smooth, but as this is a slower lens, you need to be conscious of distance to subject as well as the background distance in order to create a pleasing out of focus background. Background items that are not very far away will be rendered similarly to a mild telephoto f2.8 lens on full frame. Out of focus specular highlights wide open are rendered a bit oblong, almost a football shape, but are pleasing and not overly distracting. Flare control on the lens is above average for a lens of this era, but about average when measured against most offerings today. The lens will flare in direct sunlight and in some cases indirect sunlight as well. 
flare typically consists of a brighter center with purple or green spots radiating away from the light source. This lens is denoted as an A lens from Mamiya, meaning it has a near apochromatic design and as such has very little chromatic aberration to speak of. As a medium format macro lens, sharpness is probably the strongest area for this lens. Despite not being optimized for digital sensors like the versions of this lens created after 2000, the fact that the image circle is much larger than the crop medium format sensor here really covers up any corner or edge weakness that may be present with the lens. You can expect a sharp image, edge to edge, even wide open. Despite being over 45 years old, the lens clearly outresolves the 100 megapixel sensor on the GFX 100S, and with the 1 to 1 magnification, it provides a very competent macro capability. Paired with the GFX 100 megapixel sensor, the colors this lens provides are vibrant, deep, and well saturated. The color rendition is more modern. We don't see any vintage color output that one can get with older 35mm lenses from the 1970s era. Now it's time for the HTSA. The HTSA is our patent pending heritage focus highly technical subjective analysis. This is where I assign quantitative value to specific lens characteristics based on absolutely no scientific measurement whatsoever and based solely on my experience and personal opinion. When it comes to bokeh, I rated it a 7 out of 10. It's good, but it wouldn't be my choice if I was chasing great bokeh. Color is a strong suit, receiving 9 out of 10. When it comes to character, this lens is a macro lens first and foremost, and as such, doesn't possess any significantly unique characteristic that would set it apart from many other lenses. 5 out of 10. Flare control is adequate and on par with modern consumer digital lenses. 6 out of 10. Size is not a strength. The native GFX lens is lighter and much smaller, especially at full extension. 4 out of 10. Weight is average by medium format standards. 6 out of 10. Price is another strength of the lens. Given the price of a new native GF120 macro lens is roughly 2700 USD, the average asking price of $478 on eBay seems like a bargain. You'll need an adapter, which may cost another $100 or more. 7 out of 10. That's it for the Mamiya 645 120mm f4a macro. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, please do the thing and the other thing. Thank you again for watching Heritage Focus, and remember that you can always download the full resolution samples of the images shared today at heritagefocus.org.